So then we're going to talk about the HP 10 calculator. Not the HP 10B, not that one, which will go on the price table. But we're going to talk about this HP 10. The algebraic plus percent key. So basically a four function. But you don't see very many of these around. And Gene was uh, kind enough to donate me, donate this. Well, no, I guess you didn't donate. I guess you've loaned it to me last year with the idea that I might open it up and look at it and maybe do something with it. So, so you would really do a presentation on it. And, and maybe do a presentation. So let's see if we can move this forward. So a little history of the HP 10. So it's the KISS calculator, or the keep it simple stupid calculator, which was uh, kind of an inside uh, name for this. HP 10, 24 key, five function, uh, with percentage, you know, percentage key, May 1977 to 1979, was the, uh, basically the uh, sister or the brother to the HP 19C. So basically same functionality, uh, well not functionality, actually the same form factor, and interestingly enough, the printers are identical. So we'll get into a little bit of that. So small thermal printer uses the same four, four pack uh, AA type of batteries. And um, it was about $175 when it was introduced at HP. So just a little bit of a uh, health check. So if you ever run across an HP 10, you want to do some checks on it. It's fundamentally about the same thing as a 19C. Um, you know, look at the battery pack, see what the terminals look like, uh, you know, take any corrosion off. If you do get it, manage to get it to light up, turn it on and get it to light up, um, you'll see a nice 0.00, .00 show up in the LED display. Um, and if you don't, there probably is either fundamentally something wrong with the, um, the battery pack, the terminals, or even worse. So we'll go, we'll go into a little bit of that. So very similar to uh, taking apart the 19C, and this is basically a 19C, but you take off the, there's five screws you remove, there's two under the, under the top feet near the top of the charger, or excuse me, top of the calculator, and then there's two underneath the battery pack. So once you get those five screws out, then you get to have the fun part of separating the calculator. This is actually, I'm showing the 19C that I did last year, but it's fundamentally the same and there's a interlayer PC board, but there's a little at the bottom. There's a kind of a uh, a lip that you just need to kind of gently slide upwards to get it out and uh, take the take the calculator apart. And so you get to this point, and then if you want to remove the printer, um, there are three brass screws that you remove, and then the printer comes out. The printer's still connected. It's got several wires that power the printer itself. There's a uh, home switch on the bottom, and then there's the ribbon cable that you'll see in this area that uh, goes up to the print head. So, unfortunately, when we took this apart, we see Gene's home key completely off the bottom side of the printer, and it was looking pretty bad. So this is a piece of copper, or actually two pieces of copper, two contacts in it, and it's actually supposed to be connected the bottom of the printer up here and you can see the contacts are just completely kind of corroded away. These wires are still connected and uh, you can see fair amount of corrosion. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Oh, by the way, here's the, uh, here's the handbook. I'll just go ahead and pass this around if you guys want to take a look at it for the HP 10. So, um, oh, just another a uh, photo of if you want to remove the motor off the printer assembly, there are just two brass screws that come out. So we're still undergoing the uh, disassembly of the printer. And we get to this point. Roger. And just kind of give you an idea of the printer, and this is an HP 19C still, but the same fundamental. Same fundamental as the printer. The printer design is, is exactly the same. And then there's the white wires that, are, that uh, connect to the home key. Those kind of go into the main PC board or the, the power supply PC board, and then there's the, also the motor power uh, control wires. 
if you get to this part of the assembly, um, I don't think I've ever seen one where the wires just gently pull out of the PC board. They're usually corroded over years and, they're, and they usually have to be cut out. Or, uh, and you can cut them, cut them out and then you can resolder them back into the PC board later on. So this is the internals. So interesting for the HP 10. So there's a single processor that has the RAM, the ROM, the CPU, the display and printer driver logic all built into this one CPU. The, uh, there's a quad comparator next to it used for printer speed control. And then the LCD or the LED display is exactly the same as the 19C. So interchangeable, exactly the same part number. And then down the lower part is the uh, power supply. Let me see if I can use the. So you can see the power supply down this area, and it's not looking really good. So when you start taking this apart and, and getting down to this level, um, let's see. Okay, so I've just removed the top level PC board, and this is what the bottom level PC board looks like. And then there's uh, there are two chips underneath here on the top side. They're using for the uh, IC drive and for the printer head uh, drivers for driving the pins on the printer head as well. Jim, does the 10 power supply uh, suffer the same frailty as other wood stocks? It, if, if it, you put it, the it, external power in without battery, you try the whole thing, etc. I don't think it will, but the rec HP recommends you do not do it without the batteries. Okay. If you read the manual, but um, we'll talk a little bit about that in the part in the section coming up here. So you might notice that this disk capacitor up here looks really bad. And there's a good reason for that. It's basically coming apart. And so what I did was, um, I've, I've seen some of this, these switching power supplies that they're using this buck regulator. And, and so I had another 3900 pulp picofarad capacitor and put it in there and, and it worked just fine. So the great news was, is the next picture is, oh, look, I've got a display, voila. You know, so I took just the top side of the, uh, and, and you'll see the reverse side of this calculator in just a minute at the top side and then I just put the other PC boards underneath it so I didn't have the printer connected up to it but great we got a display you know that's that was 90% of the uh, <laughs> of what I thought was going to be the uh, next piece of it and there was a good reason why the printer didn't work so you might notice this nice red wire here it's supposed to be connected over here. <laughs> I have no idea why it got cut, but clearly it got cut. It was a much shorter wire. It never would have stretched over here, so somebody just cut it. And I don't know if whether, probably had to do with the fact that the home key was just destroyed, right? The home contacts. Once that happens, if the calculator doesn't see the home key, it just sits there and the printer head runs back and forth, right? So I guess somebody just said, well, at least maybe I'll have the calculator to work, the printer won't work, I'll just cut the, cut the printer wire. So, on we go into our uh, disassembly and where do we go next. So, if you'll recall, there is that home switch. It looks a lot better than the picture you saw earlier. So, a little bit of white vinegar, just let it sit in a little jar of white vinegar and it, it cleaned up really nicely. So, these, these copper contacts cleaned up really nicely. So here's a comparison. Here's an HP 19C printer. Here's here's the HP 10. I mean, they are they are identical. I mean, I didn't take the 10 down as far as I could have, but I didn't want the little spring to fly out that I talked about last year. I know I'd never find it again for the for the fifth time I'm trying to look for this spring. So anyhow, there was a uh, there's a brass contact here that was not in very good condition. And I started looking at that and I was trying to do some repair on it. And I wasn't real happy with the first, first attempt, so we went into a little deeper. And what we did is I looked at the, the printer. So you'll see this is the area up here. And this was pretty well, actually there were two halves of this, and it has a brass insert in here. And the brass insert is fitted in basically, I'm sure, when it's, uh, it's heated up and just pressed in to that. And creates actually a very nice, when it's, when it's working, it creates a very nice anchor for the screw, the brass screw. This, not so much. So, 
The next thing to do is say, okay, what are we going to do? We're going to have to try to fit this brass piece into that piece over there. And so I, epoxy, epoxy glue works really well for this. And I didn't have an exact form for it, but it was close enough. So the next thing you see is I've used the motor and I've actually melted some wax into the brass screw because I didn't want the threads to fill up. And then so inserted the put the epoxy, form the epoxy, then put the motor into it. So I wanted the exact registration of the motor. There's three points on the motor and it, and it just held that in place and then waited for this, uh, waited for the epoxy to dry. And you'll see the lower part of this contact here. So this piece I still have, I had to glue this piece in and this printhead as it comes over, it pushes that, it pushes that brack, this little copper piece up against the other contact and that's how it knows it's in the home position. So I haven't got the top piece on. I'm still letting this all dry and cure. And, Jim, um, when you glue it like that, put the screw that's going to end up in that thread. That's what, I, that's what I did. Oh, okay, okay. But I didn't want the screw, because the screw actually screws farther past the brass insert. I didn't want the screw to be filled in it with epoxy, because it had epoxy behind it, too. So basically, it was from here to here. There you can see the, the brass insert. Not quite as pretty, but functional. And you'll never see it, basically, you'll never see it. it's underneath the printer. And uh, the printer's actually turned over on the other side when you mount it. And there it is with the uh, motor fit back on there. And, amazingly enough, a nice little red wire that's in here now. Um, you'll also notice that I've got the, con the top contact, the uh, copper contact, and I used some uh, epoxy to, to fix that back onto it and made sure that it was functioning properly. Let's see. Oh, there we go. So, what's next? So we think we've got some things going on. And you'll notice that, uh-oh, here's a transistor laying here, and this transistor has no leads on it. This transistor came out of this location. After handling this PC board, and the corrosion on the leads, the leads, it just broke off. So I'm in the midst of going, uh-oh, now what's happened, right? <laughs> and now I go back into some of uh, Jacques Laporte's excellent work on power supplies for HP calculators and look at uh, some of Bernhardt's work that he's done on some of the 19C. It's not exactly the same power slide, but it's pretty close. I mean, actually, the, the buck regulator is really close, the switching regulator. So I determined this was an NPN transistor, and I actually bought a number of these beforehand because it's not the only place that they're used around in the calculator. So that was my display after the transistor kind of was broken off. I didn't realize all the leads were broken, most of the leads were broken. And my power supply was trying to supply about a half amp of power. Thankfully, I'm thinking, uh-oh, I just fried Gene's CPU and it doesn't work anymore, right? Well, the good news was is a little bit of work, new transistor, and we got all the display comes back again. So replace this and, and uh, put the PC boards underneath it just to make sure and powered it up off the bench power supply and it looks great. So, so we're back in business, or at least we think we're back in business until I put it all back together again. And then what was the next thing? <laughs> zero. Well, what's, what's zero? The zero was the fact that I had been testing the keys one through nine and they were working great. One through nine, one through nine, one through nine. Gosh, which key did I forget to test? The zero key. Which key is near the bottom where people tend to spill things and things kind of get all cruddy in the calculator? And one thing you probably can't see on this one, but I think I had actually already cleaned this, but there's a little brown residue here, a lot of brown residue down here and on the other side. So I was very, very carefully cleaning from the top side, but knew that it was going to have to go to the bottom side. And this is typical heat state PC board on classic calculators. And you don't want to take these off. No. You don't have to, right? Well, there's the zero key right there, and as many people, the good in calculator repair know, 
deoxid does wonderful things, right? So with a, with a little can of deoxid spraying down into this hole and a little fine needle and working it around a little bit and pressing on the zero, I got it to come back just wonderfully. Uh, you so buy that stuff? Oh yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. They, for, they still sell it. Forty years. <laughs> yes, but, and wonderfully now the zero works be, perfectly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just no. Okay, there are two things you're you're, you're trying to see right. that if the display is displaying all the signals and if the key is working. Absolutely. So just pressing all eights might be good for the display, but it doesn't tell you about didn't, it. <laughs> didn't test the zero, which I failed to do. So, here we go. Let's see. Hopefully this will function. Let's see if it will or not. Oh, there we go. I don't think I've got the uh, sound up. Guess I've got to do my taxes now. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly. Can you still get the paper for it? Yes, yeah. you can. Absolutely. Paper. So there we go. We've got a fully functioning HP10 calculator to get back to Gene. And uh, it was it was pretty rewarding. You know, a few stumbling blocks, but we got through it. And uh, so just just in summary, you know, I'd like to say that uh, you know documenting. I want to document and repair the HP10. Pair it a little with the uh, HP 19C. Very rare. What does that mean? I, I this is the only HP10 I've seen. I know Kim's got one that I. Oh, you don't have an HP10. That's right. We talked about it. You got a landscape version, right? Yes. You've got two. Bob's got two. He's going to loan me to look at. <laughs> and Sylvain's got. One working, one's one, working. One, okay. So I've never seen one. This is the first one I've ever had my hands on. So it's, it was pretty exciting to me. I, <laughs> I read two of which one was from my uncle who was the original owner bought it new. Ah, excellent. Excellent. So I want to talk a little bit about buck regulator and repairing the, the regulator, showing the various PC boards. Since I I rarely ever run across any information on the, on the web. Yeah, on the web. And then bringing Gene's calculator back to life, and that was pretty exciting. The reason he got it was given to him was you were sitting behind me last year, and you saw it. And you said, "Well, I've never seen one of those." I said, "Well, take it this next year. Do a talk on it." I do that to everybody. I've already done that to uh, Gunther. Told him to make a talk next year, and Kim. So you, you ask me a question, I'll say, "I'll tell you what. That's a good talk next year." You see what a great result. He gets a functioning well, calculator. No, right? no, people know what's going on with the ten. <laughs> um, so certainly acknowledgments and credits, Gene Wright. Thank you for loaning me the ten, and uh, and you get a benefit out of it. Uh, Wikipedia, uh, Bernard. You know, lots of information. And the 19C basically it's a sister printer to it, so lots of similarities. Uh, Jacques Laporte says his information is incredible. You know, I always go back and look at his his information in his notes. Uh, Eric Smith on the identification of ICs, you know, ran across your paper on all the 1820 series. Uh, Mike Myers, I think I referenced that last year, and of course the Museum of HP Calculators. So there's some uh, appendix information here, I won't go through it, but it just kind of goes back onto the behind this. But but thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you everybody's uh, indulgence. And thank you. Thank you.